All right, so this problem, let's take a look at another opti optimization problem. It says we have a right, circular, a right circular cylinder is inscribed in a sphere of radius r. And they want us to find the largest possible volume of such a cylinder. All right, so first, let's just go ahead and draw a picture of it. So, let's see. We've got a got a sphere here. I know it's not the best one and then let's draw a, a right circular cylinder in it. Alright so something like that. <clears throat> Alright so let's go ahead and, and label this thing. Let's put this in the Let's get the center of the sphere and let's draw a line here. Let's draw the radius. Well, I'm sorry, yeah. Well, not the radius, but this line here from the center, from the center of the bottom out to the edge of, a, of the sphere. And then this line here, that will be our radius. And Let's call this X and we'll call this Y. Okay. All right. So we want to find the largest possible volume. Okay. So so let's take what we know. Well, here we have a right triangle. So we know that R squared. Let me do that in a different color. So we know r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. <clears throat> and then we want to maximize the volume or find the largest volume of the cylinder. Well remember the volume of a cylinder is the volume is pi r squared times h. It's the area of the bottom times the height. Okay. So in the problem we have here, the volume is going to be pi times okay, y squared. Okay, it's the area of the bottom. Okay. And that's going to be y squared times the height. Okay. Let me let me just draw a picture real quick over here of a cylinder. That's R, and that's H, and it's pi times R squared times H, okay? So we've got pi times this Y squared, that's this distance here, and now times the height. So the height is 2X, okay? <clears throat> this, this cylinder See, if I go from here to here, that's x, and then if I continue on up to here, that's another x, so that would give us 2x. So we get the volume is 2 pi x times y squared. Just rearrange the terms, that's all I did. Alright, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the uh, derivative of this thing, well, but what I'm going to do first is get everything in terms of one variable. Well, I'll get everything in terms of x. Okay. So if I take this and I subtract the x squared to both sides, I end up with y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. So I can take this r squared minus x squared and replace y squared with it. See, I've got exactly what y squared is. So that gives me the volume is 2 pi times x times r squared minus x squared. And then I'll distribute. So I get the volume is 2 pi x r squared minus 2 pi x cubed. Okay. All right. So, so now I'm ready to take the derivative. So the derivative 
is equal to what? 2 pi r squared. Now remember, x is our variable. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. r we treat like a constant term. Okay, And that's minus, and then the 3 comes down, 6 pi, subtract 1, x squared. All right. So now what we have to do is set this equal to 0, okay, and solve for x. So I have 2 pi r squared minus 6, 6 pi x squared equals 0. So that's going to be 2 pi r squared equals 6 pi x squared. Okay, And so I get x squared is equal to, now I divide both sides by 6 pi. Okay. I don't look like it, but that's pi. Okay. And so if I divide both sides by 6 pi, the pi's cancel, and I'm left with r squared over 3. And so I get x is equal to r over the square root of 3. Okay. Alright, so there's x. Well, now we need to know what y is. Okay. Well, from this right here, we know that y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Alright, so I can get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus r over the square root of 3 squared. Plug that in for x. And so that's going to give me the square root of r squared minus r squared over 3 when I square that. And so y is equal to the square root. Now when I combine those two I get a common denominator of 3 so that would be 3 and I would have to multiply by 3 here. So that's 2r squared over 3 which is equal to the square root of 2 thirds and then the square root of r squared is just r. And so that's y. Okay so now I have y. <clears throat> now Remember, we want to find the largest possible volume. Okay, so <clears throat> what's the volume? Well, remember, this is our volume here. Okay, so we've got to take the x and what we got for y and plug it into here. Okay, so let me write that volume down here. So the volume is 2 pi x y squared. <clears throat> All right. So the maximum volume would be 2 pi times x, which is this, times r over the square root of 3, times y squared. So I'm going to plug this in for y. So that's going to be the square root of 2 over 3 times r squared. Okay, so let's see, we get volume is 2 pi r over the square root of 3 times 2 thirds r squared. And then when we multiply this, let's see, we get, see that's over 1, so that's going to be 4 pi r cubed, okay, see r and r squared is r cubed, and then 2 times 2 is 4 times the pi, and then that's going to be over, then I'm going to multiply the denominators, Whoop. 3 square root of 3. And whatever units this is in, it doesn't say, but it would be cubic units. Okay, so there's our, there's the largest possible volume. All right, so I hope the video helped. Uh, give me a like, share, and thanks for watching.